know if you've ever read the book of First Samuel. Hello, people. It is like one of, it probably is my favorite, if not one of my favorite books in the entire Bible because First Samuel, it, the, the, the writer is just a great storyteller. I love when you read a story and you can sense the tension in the story. I love when you read a story and you can almost, the writer's so good that you can actually, you feel like you can read the person's mind. When you feel like you can feel what they're feeling. That's the kind of story that first Samuel has in it. Those are the kind of stories that first Samuel has in it. And I'm going to read you one. It's actually from chapter one. And so if you've never read first Samuel, I hope I've whetted your appetite. I hope you go home and read the entire book, but we're going to read chapter one. And this story gives us such insight into how to face some of the deepest troubles in our life how we come to God in those moments, what can happen in those moments and how the power of God can work in those moments. And so we're going to read this story. First Samuel chapter one, verse one, it says, there was a certain man of Ramathai Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoph, an Ephraphite. He had two wives, the name of one who was Hannah and the other one was Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas were priests of the Lord. And on the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. And so it went on year by year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Can you feel that tension? It's like, man, it's getting rough. And obviously there are some results. And you see that as Hannah goes a year after year, what happens? It says, therefore, Hannah wept and she wouldn't even eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than 10 sons? After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. And now Eli, the priest, was sitting in the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. And she was deeply distressed. And she prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli, Eli was watching her, he observed her mouth and Hannah was speaking in her heart, but only her lips moved and her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli took her to be a drunken woman and Eli said to her, how long will you go on being drunk? Hello, that would be abrupt if you were praying. <laughs> the pastor came to you and said, stop drinking. Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, no, my Lord, I'm a woman troubled in spirit. I've drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I've been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman. For all along, I've been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered her, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went away and ate and her face was no longer sad. And they rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord, the Lord. And then they went back to their house at Ramah and Elkanah knew his wife and the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. And she called his name Samuel for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. What an incredible story. And so much, I mean, so much rich detail 
that honestly, in any passage or any part of this story, you could preach a whole sermon because there's truth just melting off the story. But I want to talk to you tonight about the turning point. You know, every great story has a good turning point a place where it turns around, a place where you're like, I don't know how they're gonna make it, but there's an amazing turnaround. And tonight, we see in this story a turnaround, a turning point that comes through prayer, that comes from a woman who's deeply distressed calling on God. And I believe tonight, if you're walking through something, if you need God's help, if you need a breakthrough that God wants to bring a turning point in your life that will come through calling on him, that there are some things that God is just waiting for you to say, God, I believe you can do this. And God, I believe if I call on you, you can turn it around. And I pray that tonight, if you're watching online or you're sitting in this room and you need a turnaround, that God drops faith in your heart to call out to him, to cry out to him, to seek him. And that is what brings the breakthrough in your life. The first thing though I want us to see in this story is not the turnaround, but it's the problem, the problem. And I'm gonna reread one of these verses. It said, so Penina would taunt Hannah and make fun of her for the Lord had kept her from having children year after year. You have these two wives, they're rivals. Obviously, this is a situation, a family situation where there's lots of drama. And in that time, if you didn't have children and you were a woman, it would be absolutely not just sad from the, the maternal instinct that God's put in the heart of women to say, man, I want to have kids. But it would be just completely embarrassing culturally. It, you would have been thought of as less than you would have been thought of as possibly unspiritual. You would have been looked at as humiliated. You would have seen yourself that way. You would have thought, what is wrong with me? And that's the situation Hannah's in. But as if it weren't bad enough, she has a rival wife provoking her. Now, I, I, there's a couple things in the story that I, just strike me as funny. First of all, I love, I think, I, I mean, they obviously have lots of kids. Elkanah has lots of kids. So I think this guy's not young married, all right? He should know better. But he says, I love this. He goes, why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. Why are you eating? Why are you downhearted? Just because you have no children, you have me. Now I was thinking today, oh, I know you're right there with me. Now, if you're young married, this is great. This is a gift to you. But I was thinking if Beth was having problems and if she was feeling down and if she was really just heavy, full of anxiety. And I said, why are you down? You have me. I think the response would be either what you're doing right now and laughing or way worse. And I'd be sleeping on the couch. <laughs> Needless to say, I don't think he helped the situation very much, but he did love her, but she's being provoked. I don't know where you need a breakthrough where something's hard, where you feel like I wish this would change. Have you ever had that situation, but then you were provoked? Then somebody started poking you. It doesn't have to be a person. It can be the enemy that starts poking you, starts reminding you of what you don't have, starts reminding you of, you of why it probably is the way it is. I was thinking as I was reading the passage that it's one thing to be provoked, but it's another thing when there's a little truth in the provocation. Oftentimes when we have a need where we need God to come through, 
the enemy will come along and provoke us. And he'll say, there's a reason that's happening. You don't have what it takes. You're not spiritual enough. You don't, you don't have that, that it factor. You, you actually, it's just now it comes down to it. If you see you, you're just not good enough. How could God love you? You're not spiritual enough. How, how, you know, you don't pray enough. And he pokes. And so rather than come in to a place or be a part of a service online and be a part, you feel distant. You feel separated. And it's because you've been provoked, but it's because there's just a touch of truth in there. You know, it's not that Hannah is less than Penina. It's that it's true. She doesn't have children. That's the true part. But then the provocation comes and mixes that truth that she doesn't have children. And she provokes her to say, you're, you're not good enough. You're not as loved. You're not as spiritual. And that truth is what makes it hard. And that's exactly how the enemy works. Yeah, that's right. You know, the Bible says he's an accuser of the brethren. He's an accuser of the believers. He's constantly accusing. In fact, I'm going to show you this passage in Revelation. This is the end, which makes it kind of exciting because this is how it's going to end and how it happens. But it says this, and I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. Praise the Lord. That day is going to come. Yeah, can we give God some praise for that right now? It's worth a stop. But watch this. For the accuser of our brothers, that's Christians, has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. So what's the enemy? He's an accuser. And the problem isn't just what you're facing. The problem isn't just where you need a breakthrough. The problem is the provocation that comes with that. And what you believe when you believe the lies of the enemy that he's speaking constantly over your life. Because the truth of it is we don't measure up. We're not good enough. We're not spiritual enough. We're not strong enough. We need God's help. And God knows that. That's true. None of us measure up. None of us are good enough. And so the enemy is true in saying that, but he's a liar in saying that's the thing that blocks you from the grace and the power of God and the breakthrough that you need. That's the thing that blocks your prayers. It is a lie from the pit of hell because Jesus paid so you could have access to the Father and he made a way. But the enemy comes and he provokes you. And it's exciting to cheer about because it is true. But some of you, even after you cheer, you, he's right there. And at some point, that's why the Bible says God works all things for the good. Because God can take the lies of the enemy and turn them on himself. And maybe you believed a lie for a long time. And it's time you brought the whole situation to the Lord and you brought all your thoughts and all your feelings and all the things that where the enemies tried to provoke you in the problem itself and you bring it all to him. Because the problem is if you're, if you're there and you're like, man, God, why is it this way? And I, God, this is so hard and God, I need you. And then there's the provoking. The problem is if you don't really bring it to the Lord, it can, it can cause you to become hard. It can cause you to become bitter. It can cause you to have all kinds of problems and issues. If you allow it to sit there, if you say, I can't take that pain anymore, I can't do this anymore, that can harden you. And that's not the heart of God for you. You gotta bring it to him. But then I want you to see the next thing in the story. And it's the turning point. Look at this. What does Hannah do? Once after the sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Do you know prayer is the turning point? 
when you're walking with the Lord, prayer is the turning point. But I want you to see something. She doesn't just pray, she cries out to God. It's one thing to say, God, I'm praying that you do this. It's another thing to get before heaven and cry out to God, to, to say, to bring the issue and to bring the anxiety and to bring the turmoil and to bring the insecurity and to bring all those things and say, God, I need you to take this. And God, I need your help. And I, God, I need you to move. And that's exactly what Hannah does. And I want to encourage you on this because maybe you haven't seen a breakthrough in your situation. And I want to ask you, have you cried out to God for it? Have you called out to God? Have you gotten in the presence of the Lord and say, God, here it all is. I'm going to put it all on the table. Because oftentimes, you know, when it comes to our needs, we can kind of just go through and we can kind of wish it would go away, but we never get before the Lord. And if we don't get before the Lord, then we're not going to get the answer that we need. Sometimes we've got to get all that stuff out before God can put in what he wants to do. You can't carry all that stuff and get the breakthrough that God wants to bring into your life. Sometimes you, God's just waiting for you to say, hey, why don't you bring it all to me? And you're like, Lord, I don't know if you want to see all of it. And he's like, no, I want all of it because I want all of you. I want to know your thoughts and I want to know your feelings and I want to have your heart. And that's what crying out to the Lord does. It, it, it brings our heart before the Lord and says, God, this is a vulnerable moment, but this is all I have. And God, I need you to touch me. And God, you know I need a breakthrough. And that's where God brings his power into our situation. I want you to see some of the scriptures so you can kind of get a sense for how Hannah's praying. It says, as she's praying to the Lord, Eli's watching her and she's just calling out to God. But there are moments where she's, I mean, this is like ugly praying, okay? <laughs> and if you're not familiar with ugly praying, then you, you might not have ever called out to God like this. Because sometimes, you know, we can be a little too passive. We get into everything else, but when it comes to prayer, we're like, dear Jesus, please touch this. Amen. It's a big deal. Amen. You know, but then, and the, honestly, the problem with that is then you'll hop on the phone and you'll be telling somebody and you'll be like, this is, this, this is bad. This is desperate. This is, I need help. I'm, I'm dying. I'm drowning here. Lord. <sighs> I love you. Just take this, you know, that's how it works. And then you go on social media and do a total rant, you know, that's the problem. You're venting, you're putting it in every other place. And God's saying, you know what? All that needs to go here. Some of the issues that you're having are just because you didn't bring it to the Lord. That could be a whole nother sermon. So she's praying so intensely that Eli thinks she's drunk. Now I know that's kind of funny, but imagine the moment. Sometimes you have to be, God, I don't care what people think about me. I'm not aware of what's going on around me. God, I'm just aware of God. I need your help. And God, I'm going to call out and I'm going to pour my heart out to the Lord. That's the kind of prayer God answers. That's the kind of prayer that brings breakthrough. You know, the writers of scripture, uh, you know, you can go all over the Bible, just Google cried out to God Bible, and you will see the writers of scripture over and over again say that brought a breakthrough. David, who was a man after God's own heart, cried out to God, and that's what brought the breakthrough. You want a turning point in your life? You got to cry out. You got to say, God, 
I care about this and I know you can help me. And God, I know you're good and I know you're gracious and I know you're loving. So I call on you and I pray that you would answer. Cry out. Look at this. David says this. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he did for me. For I cried out to him for help, praising him as I spoke. Then look what happens. God did listen. And he paid attention to my prayer. Praise God. David says this in another, in another place. Out of my distress, I called to the Lord and the Lord answered me. He set me free. I called, I cried. He says in another place, I cried aloud to the Lord and he answered me. Now I know when we read this passage, I know it says Hannah's praying in her heart. You know, her lips are moving, but she's praying in her heart. And I don't want you to get the idea that that's a, like, that's a theologically biblical way to pray. And I, I know that's in the Bible, but when we look at the Bible and we even see how Hannah's praying, you see over and over again, there's a cry out. There's a calling out to the Lord. Eli caught her in a moment where her lips are moving, but she's praying in her heart, but she's obviously pouring out her heart to God. I just don't want you to read that and be like, you know what, I'm just going to be a quiet crier, cry out, er. That's not in the Bible. The Bible is like, hey, you want it, you call out. You want it, you cry out to God. You want it, you raise your voice. Because God wants hungry people. God wants people that say, no, God, I really believe you're the only place this answer is going to come from, and I'm going to cry out. You know, great men and women of God who knew prayer knew this to be true. Uh, Ian Bounds, who wrote several books on prayer, says this. He says, prayerless praying gets no results. What's prayerless praying? You know, some, some, some people say, pray in your praying. It's a deep prayer. It's a crying out. It comes from your heart. It comes from your soul. There's a prayer that doesn't pray. There's a prayer that has no faith, no passion, no heat, no care, no hunger, because it has no faith. It doesn't believe God's going to answer. Therefore, it has no heat on it. And Ian Bounds, I love what he says. Prayerless praying gets no results. God is not reached. Self is not helped. It's better not to pray at all than to secure no results from praying. Because then you can say, well, I prayed and God didn't do anything. But did you really pray? Did you really call out to God? Because I'm telling you with what you're facing, if you cry out to God, that'll be a turning point. You bring it before heaven. You storm heaven. You cry out. It'll be a turnaround. It, those kind of prayers bring breakthrough. Those kind of prayers bring the power and the peace and the presence of God. And if that's what you need tonight, scripture comes to encourage you and say, cry out, cry out. God wants to work in your life. Call out to him, call out to him. I want you to see what happens. The peace that comes through prayer. Watch what happens. She said, it says, Eli answered, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate and her face was no longer sad. You know what's happening there? She gets a word. This guy, this guy is the guy, same guy who just a moment ago said, hey, stop drinking. And she's like, I'm not drinking. There's a misunderstanding. But she's crying out to the Lord and he hears about it. And he, he says, you know what? Go in peace and the Lord hear your petition. And God gave her a word. God gave her a word. And on that word, she gets up and she's good. Now, the wonderful thing about that, and this is the great thing about being in the prayer meeting, is you can cry out to the Lord. God can hear you and nothing has changed in her situation. She's She's not, she didn't get up pregnant. She got up, but she had a word. She got up and she knew God had heard her and that brought peace to her. And all of a sudden she's, has a joy 
and she's able to function and the anxiety is lifted because she cried out to God and God gave her a word. So maybe you're here tonight and you're like, what happens if I cry out to God? If you cry out to God and you bring what you need before him, he can give you a word and then you'll see the breakthrough, but in between you have peace. I'm telling you, there's nothing like crying out to God and getting a peace that can only come from him. It's so good. It's so good. It's like, it's like you just don't, you're like, man, I just feel so much better and I don't even know why. And it's, you know what it is? It's the presence of the Lord. It's, a, it's, it's faith, God putting faith in your heart, the presence of the Lord resting on your life, the peace of God. And you're like, man, that's awesome. Nothing's changed, but I, I feel like this is taken care of. I feel like it's done in heaven. That's the kind of power and peace that comes through calling on God. And then she, this happened and she rose early in the morning. She worshiped before the Lord. And then they go back to their house and God he had heard her prayer. God answers her prayer and she has a son. So God not only gives her peace, but he gives her the breakthrough. And that's the wonderful thing when you cry out to God. Some of you need a turning point. Some of you need a breakthrough. Some of you need God to come through. And I just wanna encourage you tonight, if you cry out to the Lord, if you lift your voice to heaven, if you say, God, I'm pressing into you, nothing else matters, God, because I need a touch from you, God will hear your prayer and God will give you peace that passes all understanding and God will bring a breakthrough into your life. I believe that tonight people are gonna cry out to God and they're gonna see a miracle in their situation. I believe tonight God's gonna bring supernatural breakthrough. I believe tonight some of you have been provoked by the enemy, but you're saying, you know what? I think I'm done. And I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a turnaround. I'm gonna, this is gonna be the turning point because I'm gonna bring it before the Lord. I'm gonna cry out to God. Are you done with that? Do you want the breakthrough? Cry out to him and God will answer your prayer. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining James River Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. And we wanna let you know that we wanna connect with all our online family. You can just click the link next to me to connect to us. We'd love to meet you and connect with you. As well, we'd love if you subscribe to the channel and press the bell for notifications. I'll tell you what, it's a great thing to do because we're always putting out great sermons, new worship content, and that helps you stay up to date with everything that's happening. We hope you have a great day to day and we'd love for you to join us live for our services every Sunday and Wednesday. Thank you again for watching and God bless.